Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> All right, I'm ready to sip and paint. Are you? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Already sipping. We're sipping here. We're sipping our paint. <laughs> Don't sip the paint. The green tastes terrible. How about the red? <laughs> not, not as bad as the green. We don't have green. All right, we so I'm going to ask all of you to use. Blue and yellow. Oh, that's true. Oh, but you will in a minute. You will. Hold on, you will. All right, so anyway, I'll ask everyone to mute. And um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the uh, things. First of all, my name is Nancy. I'm at Sipping and Painting Hamden. And um, thank you so much for, for doing this tonight. I'm super excited to paint with you guys. All right, so I'm gonna be using a 16 by 20 canvas. This is our sample painting. It's called Soft Snow. And uh, here we have unlimited possibility. Go ahead and mute if you will. Someone's not muted, okay? All right, uh, you should have water. Um, not to drink, look, this is a nasty old water jar. This is uh, water to clean my brushes in. So you should have some water. You should have some napkins. You should have a variety of different brush sizes. You should have some paint in primary colors. I have red, blue, yellow, black, and white. And that's all we need. I'm gonna teach you how to mix colors to get green and brown. And a uh, beverage of choice. And away we go. Woohoo! All right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my biggest brush. I'm going to my biggest brush in water. Thank you. Uh, go ahead and unmute, or unmute, please. No, I'm going to put my, and the reason I'm asking, the reason I'm asking you to mute is I'm going to take this. I'm going to tape this and um, tape. That's an old person's word. I'm going to record it. And then uh, so people who missed the call can, can go back in and um, catch up later and they can hear everything. So thank you. All right. If you can't find your I can go you're, out. you're breaking up, so I'm not hearing what you're saying. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry about that. Um, I need everyone to go to the bottom of your screen and touch the bottom of your screen or hover over it. And there should be a little microphone and then be sure to mute it. Okay. And then I'll let you know after the instruction, couple instructions when it's okay to unmute. Sounds like everyone's muted. All right. Hopefully Hopefully you'll be able to hear me now. Hopefully. All right. If you can't hear me, uh, just then go ahead and unmute now, okay? All right, thanks. Okay. So I've covered my canvas with just plain old water. And the reason I do that is Denver is very dry and I want to make sure the, the canvas is hydrated so that it will not, my paints won't dry too quickly. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be kind of sloppy, no problem. Just, just so I have some moisture on it, so I, when I spread the paint, it won't dry too quickly. So no perfection. Perfection's the enemy of art. All right. Unless your art is painting very detailed things, I guess in that case, it's not a bad thing. But this is a loose painting. It's a little more, um, yeah. So we're not gonna try for perfect. We're gonna try for good and fun. So you'll notice that the background, we're gonna start with the background and the sky in the background is loose. What I mean by loose is they're messy strokes. Do you see that? It gives the appearance of clouds just by having some white in areas and some dark in areas. But they're just the impression of clouds, not carefully painted clouds. So we're gonna go for that impression. So I'm gonna put white on one side of a big brush. 
I'm going to go on, and when I pick up my paint, I try not to go right into the middle. I don't want to contaminate the whole thing. Just kind of sneak in from the side with it. And then I'm going to go ahead and cover the top of my canvas, let's say about a third of the canvas with blue and white. But notice that it's streaky. I want to keep it streaky. So if you are a person who likes things neat and meticulous, you're going to have to fight the urge, okay? Don't over blend it. Let's keep it a little bit messy. All right? So if you're painting with someone who is meticulous and neat, you might have to encourage them to have another drink, okay? Uh, or at least just don't be neat. Friends don't let friends over blend, okay? So I want to just keep it messy and loose. And when it's messy and loose like that, it gives the impression of clouds without having to paint clouds. And if I want a little more cloud action going on, I just put on some little more, more white in messy splotches. There's nothing particular or neat about this sky. It's a loose, wispy impression of clouds. And I find that when I teach in my classes, people who have jobs where they have to be very meticulous, uh, if you schedule people or if you're in finance or engineering or accounting, this kind of loose painting can be a real challenge because we're so used to being exact. So we're going to have to suspend that urge and just relax and let it be a little messy. Also, people who have very clean houses and desks. It's a little harder to paint loose. Um, but notice how fast I'm doing it. By doing it quickly, I can't be too neat. <laughs> notice I'm not holding it up here like a pencil. If I did that, then it would be, uh, I would take a long time and then I could be more exact. But I want to be loose. So I'm going to hold my brush way back and use it like an orchestra conductor. Woo, woo, woo. It helps to go woo, woo, woo. And that way you get a wispy sky. All right, you'll see that my blue is not the exact same color as the blue in the other painting, and my sky is not exactly the same, and that's fine. We have about 10 different colors of blue here in the studio, and you just have, um, we use a really basic palette for our kits. So we just use primary colors. This is an ultramarine blue. This may have been a phthalo blue. We also have cerulean blue and cobalt blue and primary blue and uh, uh, fluorescent blue. So it doesn't really matter what color we're using. It's going to be beautiful. All right. So my paint is not going to look exactly like yours. Yours isn't going to look exactly like mine. No one's is going to look exactly like this. Um, the sample, and that's fine. The only painting anyone's going to see is yours, and they're going to think you're a genius. All right. So I want to just talk to you about cleaning your brush. Uh, I let the water do all the work. And what I mean by that is I swish the dickens out of it. Or as Bob Ross would say, beat the dickens out of it. And that will get my brush good and clean. When I teach little kids, I always tell them, say they're ABCs. And then if you wash it a lot in the water, then when you use your napkin, all you have to do is touch it on to test it. And you won't use a half a tree. A half a tree's worth of napkins. All right. Plus it's fun to swish. All right. So after you get your cloudy sky on, I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. And then we're going to continue with our mountains. Now remember, it doesn't have to go down as low as mine. 
you can see it's only this top quarter that really where it really shows. I was exaggerating a bit. And if anyone's celebrating anything tonight, like a birthday, an anniversary, retirement, um, uh, having successfully uh, beaten COVID or anything, uh, feel free to unmute and let us know what you're celebrating so we can toast to you, okay? Maybe you adopted a new puppy. Maybe every day is worthy of celebration these days. Anyone celebrating anything? I'll take that as a no. <laughs> I, I'm celebrating a date night uh, with my wife sitting at the end of our kitchen island uh, painting some sky. That's what I'm celebrating and it's all good. <laughs> Yay, nice. All right. Cheers to that. Awesome. Well, three cheers to all of you being alive and, and well, hopefully well, and us, uh, we're gonna get through this. All right, so we're gonna paint some, these mountains for some reason are gray, I don't know why. But they are. So we're gonna we're gonna paint some gray mountains. I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a medium brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of black and a little bit of white. And since mine are next to each other, I can just scooch them. Things scooch together on the couch. And I'm gonna make a little gray with that, a little charcoal gray. But you'll notice those mountains aren't exactly 100% gray. They have a little bit of warmth in them. And what I mean by warmth is they're a little bit more brown. So I'm also gonna pick up a tiny bit of red. I wanna see what that looks like mixed in with my black and white. Just a tiny bit of red. See if I can make something that's a little more like a brown. All right, not quite there yet. So I'm gonna pick up a ladybug worth a yellow or maybe half a pinto bean and just a ladybug, a blue. And I'm gonna mix that in. I'm just making small amounts so I can, I don't have to waste a lot of paint. I'll see what the recipe is by just mixing and checking it out. A little bit more red. If you mix, so I had black and white, and basically mixing just a pea size of each one of the colors in together to see if I can make a grayish brown. All right, I'm dabbing and dabbing. You can see that. but I don't wanna to make too much of it because I don't wanna waste the paint in case I'm way off. I think that's probably pretty good. Looks brown to me. Looks like a grayish brown. All right, and then here's, here's your courage test, your bravery test. You get to come on in and make a mountain. Whoop, whoop. Then I'm gonna make a valley, I'll make another mountain, but notice I'm not making perfect triangles. I don't want it to look like Charlie Brown's shirt or a teepee. And I'm also wiggling my brush because I don't want anything to look perfect. I want it to look more natural. So that's my mountain range. It's not perfect triangles. It's more, whoops, that one's a curvy one. This one's pointy. This one's taller. Then this one's only half on. And that's gonna look a little more natural. And then in the direction that one would ski down, I'm gonna just kind of build down the mountain. Usually mountains grow, like you think they go up, right? We paint them up, no, we're painting them down. And I'm going to not quite half, you know, well actually, let's go halfway down. That's about halfway down the canvas. But notice that my brush strokes are in the direction that a person would ski down if you had skis on. So here's top of the mountain, you'd ski down this way. So that's the way my brush stroke should go. 
here, I'd, I'd ski down that way. That's the way my brush strokes could go. Ski, ski. So that just kind of gives my mountains a little bit more structure. And I try to mimic the slope of that with my strokes. And I'm taking this about halfway. Now, if you have to mix more paint, if it's not exactly the same color brown, no worries, who cares? Mountains aren't all, each mountain is a little bit different than the next. And if one's a little more blue than the other or a little more brown than the other, that's fine. They're just like people. They each have their own little personality. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick up um, my medium brush. I'm gonna put up my blue paint on both sides. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint a river that goes like this. See this? And then here, and then it's gonna broaden out, okay? So it's gonna be kind of flattish. That's another artwork, flattish. Made it up, kind of flattish here. And then it's going to come down. And notice how I'm holding my flat brush flat. See that? And I'm painting the water flat, zigzagging back and forth. Why would I do that? The reason, I'll tell you. The reason is, is that water from a distance looks flat. Even if it's moving water, it'll look flat. And then I'm going to broaden it out down here. So comes in from the side, there's my, it's coming down from a mountain and then it's come, it's small at the, at the uh, beginning of the river and then it's starting to, you know, branch out a little bit and then it kind of comes out in a funnel shape, something like that, something like that. And we'll sculpt it a little bit with our snow but that's the general idea. Down here, it, it, it expands. So, but, but again, remember, see how I'm zigzagging back and forth? But finally, finally, like F-I-N-E-L-Y, not F-I-N-A-L-L-Y, finally. And I'm keeping my brush flat to keep those water lines flat. Just like that. All right. Just got a little more width there, but it doesn't really matter. Your river is gonna be different than my river. My river is gonna be different than the original. It doesn't matter. This is wherever your favorite place is. It's your, your beautiful spot. No one else's. You make it your way. Your world, your river. All right, and I'm gonna show you the snow. We're gonna do a second step before we hang out and visit again. Basically, we already have white. So we don't have to do much to that because we already have snow. Isn't that a miracle? All right, but we do need to neaten it up a little bit and we need to sculpt our river a little. So I'm gonna take that brush I was just using and I'm going to dip it in white, okay, on both sides. And then I'm just going to come in and I'm going to make little mounds to sculpt the bottom of that mountain a bit. Oops, if you get a drip, wipe it off, no big deal. And then I'm going to do the same thing under the river. I'm going to kind of sculpt it. And if my brush is mixing with the blue, cool, that's fine. No worries, it's all good. And then I'm gonna sculpt it here too with a wiggle. Whoop, 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 with a wiggle. And if I'm picking up a little bit of blue on my brush, awesome, that's even better. Just wiggling on, kind of making an outline, but with a wiggly, like I have a tremor. Not to make fun of people who have tremors, but sometimes, that's a good analogy. It's outlining it, but with a wiggle.
See the wiggle? And then I'm going to just pick up a tiny amount of my blue and a little bit of my white on the other side. And I can come in and I can just with the lightest touch, just put in some little random shadows with this super light blue. Maybe I'll pick up a little bit more light, white. And I'm just kind of putting in some recessed areas um, with this very, very pale blue, mostly white. Because when you look at snow, it's not really white, honestly. You, when you paint snow, it reflects the light around it. It's just like any water, it reflects light. And so we want some slight blue, messy blobs, very, very, very pale blue, messy blobs in our snow. Okay, so look at the right and look at the left. Can you tell the difference? This would be like freshly fallen snow that not even a bunny rabbit has come across. Very rare. This is more natural. It looks like the wind has sculpted it a bit. Uh, maybe someone's walked on it. Uh, so just by adding a tiny bit of blue and a bunch of white and just messing it up a bit. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I don't wanna make it all the same color. I wanna leave it kind of random blotchiness. I'm not painting it all sky blue or light blue. I just want some areas a tiny bit blue and some just white, just so it looks like, you know, maybe a deer laid right there. Okay. Can put a tiny bit more blue over there. We just want it to be, you know, there's some messy areas in the snow. We don't know why. Maybe somebody walked there, maybe an animal laid there. Maybe the wind came over the hill or beyond the trees and knocked more of that around. We don't know. We don't care. We just want to mess it up a bit. All right, so you have your river and you have your snow. If you change your river, just make sure you go on back and then um, sculpt it again with a little bit of white and do the wiggle thing, okay? I changed mine just to, I didn't like the shape. Now I'll just go back in with a little bit more white there to, to soft, soften the edge. So the way this painting got its name, Soft Snow, is from this wiggly edge because it gives the impression that the snow is kind of piled up softly there. Does that make sense? You know how when yeah. snow's really wet and heavy, it just kind of looks like, I don't know, like whipped cream or something? Yeah, yeah. Yes, that indeed. Kind of so that's what we're trying to do with that wiggle next to the water. And then if you already did all that, you can plump. I'm just plopping more white right next to the river. I'm just like taking these globs of white. This is going to take a long time to dry these globs of white and just kind of outlining the river down here with these clumps of white. Uh, and that's just representing like piles of snow that are just kind of accumulating at the river. Whoa. Where the river runs through it. All right, so um, in your water, we're gonna make some straight lines with white. Take your, your smallest, skinniest brush, and then we're just gonna make some straight white lines not necessarily going all the way across, but just kind of alternating or random. And they're just kind of straight across. And that's showing little, little rapids or little waves. 
But again, from a distance, water looks pretty flat, even if it's not flat. Um, if you see those, you know, somebody paints waves like that, it's very South Park looking. But up close, I mean, um, in a more realistic landscape, from a distance, water is fairly flat looking. And the white is the sun hitting, uh, hitting those currents or little waves. And um, so the water up close could look pretty turbulent, but from a distance, it's, you know, uh, the lines just look pretty flat. Believe it or not. So I'm just putting some kind of random white lines in there uh, and they're horizontal and it's with my thinnest brush. That water looks cold, doesn't it? You can also put some clumps, you know, wherever you think there are clumps of snow. Kind of forgot that. Where do you think snow might be piling up, but we might do that later at the base of some trees. Anyway, so we have some white lines in a river. blue in there. I'm just tweaking. I'm not doing anything new. Just tweaking and playing. If you're, if you're looking at your river going, you know, I like the color and I like the lines, but there's something about it that's not quite realistic. This is probably what it is. Okay. But basically, your river needs to kind of go back and forth a bit. If it's like straight across and then down, it's not gonna look natural, right? Because rivers go around tree stumps and rocks. And so they have to be bumpy, bumpy, okay? So if yours isn't bumpy, here's a good way to make it a little more bumpy, okay? So do, do, do. Now here's where you get to go a little crazy, okay? Close your eyes. Oh man, I can't believe she's doing that. So if yours was really straight, why not get crazy? Okay, if you can't get crazy here when you paint, where can you get crazy? Yes, I messed up my lines, who cares? But I'm improving my river by making it a little more believable. So if yours is looking like it's a, a hot dog, then Go ahead and mess it up by just going and make it a little more curvy, okay? Now, I know you guys are, anyone who's a very meticulous person is probably having a heart attack that I did that, but who cares, right? All you have to do is go back in with your baby brush or a small brush, a flat brush, and then just make those lines in it straight again. But, but just by making, adding those curves to it, it's gonna look a lot more like a winding river. Rivers should be windy, or creeks. Rivers or creeks, any, any flowing body of water isn't gonna be like a straight hot dog. And sometimes we can't tell. We've been looking at this for a while now. Sometimes you have to get up and look at it from 10 feet away um, because we can't see what we're doing when our nose is in the painting. The proper viewing distance from a paint for a painting is about 10 feet away. So get up as far as you can and look at it from across the room. And then ask yourself, would my river look a little better if I made it a little more windy? And this would be a great time to do it before we move on to our trees. I did pick up some of the white from before, but you know what? After looking at my painting from 10 feet away, I realized it was a little straight. Here's another thing. If your river comes straight across and then down, and this is like a right angle here, you wanna make this a little softer. Does that make sense? Make this curve a little softer so it's not a right angle. Okay. Do you Thank see you. That, how it's more curved now? Um, yes. Because, yeah, because it would make sense that rivers are a little curvy. Does that make sense? But I couldn't see that from close up. I had to step back to be able to see it. 
that, oh yeah, my river would benefit from getting a little wilder. So if you play it safe at, at home, at work, uh, you know, at school, whatever you're doing, get a little crazy, right? This is just paint. No one's gonna die if we get a little crazy and we don't like it. We can always paint over it. But go ahead and, and get a little crazy with, with your river. I just wanted I just wanted you to notice that I'm putting after I made my river a little more crazy, I'm just putting those clumps back in with blobs of white paint along the riverbed. You can see how globby that is there. It's just where the river is kind of broken up the snow and then uh, it, it just kind of piles up on the sides, kind of like on your driveway after a snowstorm, right? Basically, I want to uh, just show you one thing. Um, when you want to create a focal point somewhere, you want to make the sides a little darker. This is just kind of a painting tip because then it brings your eye to the brighter area or the twinkly area. So I can add a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit of light blue on my brush and just kind of squeak it on in here. It, it didn't really squeak, it didn't make a noise, but that's the general thing is, I just want to darken up my sides a bit, maybe they're not that much, but just kind of a little bit more of that, uh, hold on, that was a lot. A little bit more of that light blue, just kind of off to the sides in the corner. And it's not so much that anybody would really even notice that it's deliberate, right? But I just want to kind of keep the light and the brightness more toward the river. So it's, keep it subtle. If you put on anything that's too dark, just, you know, hit it again with a little bit more white. Uh, just because I want to darken that up a little bit and I'm also sloping it down toward the river a tad. So hopefully that's still subtle enough that no one's gonna say, hey, why is that framed in blue, right? Just a little bit of light blue, just to kind of, you know, direct my, the viewer's eye a little bit more toward the river, just a little bit. And when Bob Ross paints his uh, paintings, he also makes the sky a little bit bluer in the corners like that too. Not a lot, we don't want it to be noticeable. So. Here's the thing, you put it on a little bit and then you stem, step back five, 10 feet away and just make sure it's not too noticeable. You don't want it, people to go, why are the corners like got a big blue cotton ball in there? But uh, just a little tip. This is kind of one of those advanced tips that when you darken the corners a little bit, it brings your eye in to the focal point, whatever your focal point is somewhere in here, right? So that's kind of like one of those extra little Little advanced tips. <laughs> no extra charge, right? All right. And again, kind of sloping down in that direction. All right. So that just kind of, you know, gave it a little more character and draws my eye to here a little bit. All right. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to make some more brown. Um, who can who can tell me uh, what's what colors make brown? Black, Black red, and yellow. yellow. No, so blue, red, and yellow make brown, but if you want to make dark brown, you have to add some black to it, right? So I'm going to pick up a little blue, a little red, a little yellow, and then if I want it to be dark brown, I pick up some black. Smear all that together. I don't want to put pick up so much black that it just turns black, right? Because the black will overpower it. So I want to, you know, have those other colors in there too. I do want a dark brown, like a Hershey's dark chocolate brown. And then I want to um, just be careful. I know this is a little wet. So you have, if you have any blobs there, if I have any blobs where I want to put a tree, I just want to take a clean, dry brush, just flatten it on my snow so I'm not fighting a glob. I'm not going to fight a glob. There's no glob here. But once I get some brown mixed, then here's my bravery test. I'm going to put a lot of pressure at the beginning because the, the base of trees are wide and then less pressure as I go up. And I'm actually turning my medium brush to get a smaller trunk as I go. Less pressure, less pressure so it gets thinner. And keep it wiggly, don't make it straight. Don't make it straight. So that's the bottom of my trunk of my tree. I did not make it 
perfectly straight because trees don't really grow straight in nature. They have their own personality. Bob Ross always used to say they're kind of like politicians, keep them crooked and then they'll look real. I don't know if that's true. I've met some really great, I used to do some political nonprofit stuff and I met some really great uh, people in politics, but yeah, there's crooked ones out there too. All right, so make sure that the bottom of your trunk is widest because as Bob Ross used to say, trees need foots. And then, so it's widest at the trunk. And then as it comes up, those branches are smaller and thinner as they go up. So trunks are the fattest and then the branches come off the trunks, they get thinner. And then off of trunks we'll have, no, off of trunks are branches, off of branches are twigs, right? We're not gonna put the twigs on yet, just the main, trunk and then some branches. So I used a flat brush. So if my flat, on a flat brush, okay, the way it's a, the reason it's a flat brush is that down here where the ferrule is attached to the brush handle, that's round. But as it goes up, it's crimped. So one side's flat and one side's, you know, pinched. And so that's called, that's a flat brush. And so if I use the flat side of the flat brush at the bottom, if I turn it just a quarter turn, it gets thinner because now I'm using that skinny side. And that's a good way to get those branches thinner at the top. If you already made your branches too fat at the top, just make the trunk bigger down here so that the trunk matches the, the branch. I always start down in the trunk, always. And then I come up to make my branches. And I'll tell you why I do that. I want the the tree, the branch, the trunk to be fatter here and the branches to be fatter where they're attached to the trunk and thinner as they go up. If I start in the sky and pull down, I'm gonna be depositing more paint where I first touch. And if I do that, I'm gonna get a cactus. So I wanna avoid getting a cactus unless this is Flagstaff. Well, even then I don't think there's cactuses in the mountains, but uh, yeah, so just, you know, Unless you want cactuses, try to stay in the trunk and then pull out when you need a branch and pull out and up and keep it wiggly. Don't make it straight. That was a lot at once. Hopefully, hopefully you didn't bail on me. That was a lot of information at once. Hmm. You guys still with me? Kinda. You know what I just realized that after we do that tree, let's just leave it alone for a bit. Let's go do some pine trees on the other side first, okay? Before we do anything else to that tree, all right? I like it. Let's do that. So just remember, wider at the trunk, Bob Ross called it foots. He said trees need foot so they don't fall over. Wider at the trunk, thinner as it goes up. And I'm gonna come in later and I can put in, you know, little branches off the branches or you could do it now, that's fine. You could come in with a teeny tiny round brush, a thin round brush and put some branches off of your, your put some twigs off of your branches. Why not? We could do that now. An hour later, you decide. But these are thinner and smaller and I wanna keep them crooked. Don't make them straight. We don't want anything perfectly straight or it won't look natural. It'll look like Disney World. And you know how Disney World's cool, but it looks kind of fake. Keep them wiggly, keep them crooked. I think Bob Ross said in his show, uh, when he was talking about crooked, he, he said, send them to Washington. I don't want to put many leaves on these trees, do we? Um, no, this one actually isn't going to get any leaves. We're going to, 
we're going to go and do those pine trees. I probably should have done those first, but I get so excited about trees, I kind of forget my head. And then, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off any excess paint on my brush after I put on those branches, knock off any paint. I'm not cleaning my brush. I'm just knocking off it as much paint as I can. And then I'm going to use it to go scribble, 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 scribble down here a bit for some dirty snow and roots. Make sure you don't have much paint on your brush when you do that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you the, this, uh, the pine trees. Okay. So I'm going to, um, let's do the ones in the back first. Okay. So I have a teeny skinny brush and it's, I made more of that brown. So if you need more brown, go ahead. But just watch this. And then if you need to make brown, you can do it after. So I'm going to, I'm going to just make a trunk with a skinny brush, but don't make it too straight. And the way I can tell myself not to make it too straight is I kind of spin the brush in my hand. I can't possibly keep it straight if I do that. Because oh. trees are never straight. This one goes all the way up. These are just the trunks, okay? So I have two here, one here, one here. And then I got this leaning guy. Looks like there might be a little one over there, maybe. So let's just, I'll add it just in case. Not quite sure. All right, and then there's definitely one back here. So that one, I'm going to start right here on the side in the front of the river. Now, oh, yeah, it's going to overlap with the tree I already did. Because remember, I confessed that I got excited and did this one too early. I get very excited about happy trees and oh, well, I'll deal with it. It's just paint. No one's going to die if we make a mistake, right? So that looks like there's three pine trees. One, two, three. And we're putting them behind this tree. We're, we're being difficult. Let's see. Hold on. Help me look at this, okay? So there's definitely one there. You see that? Then this one is bigger. And then that one is smaller. So this one goes down low. Let me put that one in after. Let me think about this. All right. I'm going to put one right back here. And we might not even be able to see it, but who cares? All right. This one, I'm really sorry I got excited and put this in too, too early. Please forgive me. Do you guys forgive me? Yeah. Depends. <laughs> it depends. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do, right? You're far away. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one. I'm going to start it right here. Not too straight. Not too straight. And it's, it's overlapping with that other one. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how to paint these in the background and then come and bring this one forward at the end. So no one will ever know I did it out of order. Okay, so what I have here is I have one skinny trunk here, one skinny trunk. I have one skinny trunk here. I have a little baby skinny trunk here. I have another one kind of leaning over the river. It starts right at the base of it down here. I have this one that's gonna be a pine tree, a little skinny one back there. Anything close is fine. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Who cares? No one will know. I know. And if I don't <laughs> like it, I'm not happy. I'm not making branches because these are gonna be pine trees, remember? No, they're not gonna have other like, this is a deciduous tree, it has branches and twigs. These don't, okay? Those just have a trunk. They're little Christmas trees. I'm going to do these first, and then I'm going to do that one. The one with all the personality. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a flat brush, and I'm going to make green, okay? So the way to make green is just take blue and yellow. Ooh, ah. Swirl them together. And there was a, someone on like $10,000 Pyramid. That's a really old show. You guys might remember. Kind of like uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And they, they had the really easy questions first. The ones that everyone gets right, you know, 100% of the time. 
Uh, so they always ask those first so that people feel good and, you know, gets people watching. Well, this guy walked up and they said, okay, uh, here's your first question. Um, what color does blue and yellow make together? And the guy didn't know. And that was it. He was off the show. I felt so bad for him. I'm like, oh my gosh, as a former preschool teacher, that broke my heart. I had to fly to California and all that, and he missed it. So anyway, you guys, if you go on that show, you're going to know the blue and yellow make green. All right. So I mixed up some green. It's blue and yellow. And then I'm going to chisel my brush. Watch this. Chisel, chisel by just knocking off any clumps. I'm using a flat brush. So I want to just knock off any clumps. And when I chisel it on the side like that, it makes it a little thinner. See that? A little thinner. All right. And then I'm going to start. Watch carefully, okay? This is with a flat brush. Now, if this is dry, I can steady my hand with my pinky. I'm gonna watch carefully, everybody. I'm gonna start at the top of this tree, holding my flat brush flat. You see how those lines are flat across? Just like the lines in the river. And I'm zigzagging back and forth, but I'm not tilting my brush zigzag. I'm just jumping down. If you've ever repelled, it's the same kind of movement. I did that about 30 years ago. All right. Um, more than that. All right. Anyway, so I'm just kind of going back and forth, but I'm keeping my flat brush the same um, orientation. It's still flat. And I'm just, I don't want to have zigzags, so keep them close together so it doesn't look like Z's, okay? No Z's. But I'm going back and forth, and it's getting wider, yeah, wider as I go down. Now, it's a little bit light. I think I'm gonna add a little black to it, to my green, because that's a little light. Then I can tap over any of it. Yeah, that's a little, little darker, that's what I want. I can tap over those areas that were too light. And I'm gonna come all the way down, because it's not a Christmas tree. I'm not buying it at a Christmas tree lot, so nobody chopped off that bottom branch to cut it down. So I can come all the way down to the snow level. And I can go back up and fill in anywhere, but always leave space between the branches so the birds can fly in and build a nest. If you make it too solid, it's gonna look like someone plunked an ice cream cone upside down in your snow, and then the birds won't have any place to fly in and build a nest. And then you'll have angry birds. So keep your birds happy, leave, leave space between the branches. All right. And then if your trunk is showing too much, just tap over it with a little more green. Boop, 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 boop. All right. See my tree? I'll show you again, and you guys can work on it, but I'll show you again for those who want to see it again. I'm going to let that point stay. I want to point at the top of my pine trees. I always want to point. I'm going to come down, and I'm tapping real softly, real soft. Doop, 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 doop. Real soft. No pressure. No pressure, because I don't want to blob. No pressure. Just tapping, keeping my the top of my flat brush flat. Tap, tap, tap. I could even close my eyes. Just make sure that you um, come out a little farther as you go down so it keeps that triangle shape, that pizza shape, piece of pizza shape. And maybe some branches are a little fuller than others, right? That'd be natural. Maybe a little bear climbed up there, took a nap, and broke a branch. Oops. Tapping over the trunk for fullness. Boop, boop. Keep it pointy at the top. That's a mistake I see a lot. Is people forget to keep it pointy at the top. This little tiny tree here, oh, it just needs the tiniest amount of little branches. Real teeny at the top. 
soft, 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 light touch, real tiny light touch, no blobs. Isn't it cute? Way back there. Way back there, little tree. Hi, little tree. Pine trees are almost as much fun as deciduous trees. And we're just gonna, we're gonna pretend like this tree's not even there. We're gonna just go over those pine trees, okay? Point at the top, point at the top. Coming down, coming down. Trees grow up from the ground, but when you paint, you can have them grow down from the sky. It's your world. You get to play, play God here a little bit because nowhere else in life does anyone let you do that. So you get to do it when you paint. You can paint mountains going down. You can paint trees going down. They used to ask Bob Ross how he learned to paint in 22 minutes, and he said it took him 32 years. So, uh, that makes total sense. <laughs> be, be patient with yourself, okay? I got a smudge. Any place where you get a smudge that you don't want to smudge, just use your white like correction fluid. For all of us who are old enough to know what correction fluid is, use your white like that. If you do make a mistake, let it dry, let it dry, let it dry. And then come back over it with white. And then let that dry. If you just keep piling on wet on wet, it'll be a mess. All right, so there is a trunk here. So I'm gonna have to, man, I'm sorry I showed you that one first. Everybody gets, well, I was gonna say you get your money back, but sorry, no. <laughs> Just sorry, but we'll come back in. We'll fix that tree. I'm putting in the pine tree, just in, like it's right over it. Boop, 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 boop. Then I'll go back and fix that deciduous one a tad. But there is a pine tree back there, and I'm gonna. I'm just gonna keep on going. It's good to be able to make mistakes and then fix them. So I'll just pretend that was a happy accident, but I put that deciduous tree in front right away so I can show you how to fix things. Bob Ross used to say, no mistakes, just happy accidents. Mm -hmm. right, I'm running out of green here, so I'm gonna make some more green. I'm gonna add a little black to my green, remember? I want it to be a darker green, no lime. That's really good. Freaking out. And I bring the branches all the way down uh, again because in a city park they remove the bottom branches to mow underneath it. But in nature, the branches, the grass grows right up to the bottom of the branches and you don't have that gap. So when I'm doing a pine tree that's in nature in a natural setting, I, I bring it all the way down. And then there was another one back there, remember? So I'm gonna find it. Give it some foliage. Now, if this just looks like a big clump of trees on your, your painting, that's okay. That's all right. All right, remember when I showed you, remember when I told you that I'd put that tree in a little early? I'm gonna bring it forward and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. So when things are farther away, they're lighter in color. So, and they're also bluer. I don't know if you knew that. 
they're lighter and they're bluer. So to make something look closer, just make it darker and warmer colors. So less blue, okay? So I'm gonna take my black and a little brown. Reminder, Ava's right below you. Gotcha, got you. My paints are a mess, so I gotta bear with me one second. I'm taking my black and I'm gonna come back in and go over this tree a little bit, the one that I did first, just so you can see it again. Cause I kind of disappeared back there. So if I just go over it with some black, I can get it to appear again. Now my black isn't clean, it was mixing with brown. So as long as I go over that again, my tree pops back out. That deciduous tree, the one that's not a pine tree. And by doing that, going over it again, it brings it forward. So I wanna apologize that I got excited and put that in too early, but it's an easy fix. I just go over it and it just goes right back on top of everything else. It pushes everything out of the line in front of it and says, that's my space, get out of the way. Just brought it all forward. Easy fix. And then you can do that with the twigs too, if you if you want to do that with those twigs that are on there. So if you had a deciduous tree that you put a pine tree over, if you want to put the deciduous tree back in front, just go over it with black, and it just brings it right in front again. Easy fix. Easy fix. All right. Now we're gonna let that dry a bit. I'm gonna clean my brushes. Oh, wait a minute. We gotta do this big tree over here. <laughs> Oops, almost forgot. Hold on. All right, so this is a big pine tree leaning over the river. And we're gonna do it just like we did the others, but this time we're gonna make this one lean. Maybe it's trying to get some sun. Maybe it's roots are not really stuck in the ground too well. Maybe it's an older tree and it's on his last leg. So that one's gonna lean. Gonna let that be a minute. I'm gonna find my flat brush, that medium flat again, and I'm gonna go back into my green and I'm gonna tap, tap some green onto that tree. to make it a pine tree. I noticed that some of you were all were already ahead of me and you already did that. But if you are following along and you wanna do it right with me, uh, that's what I'm doing. Just, just turning this into a pine tree again, pine tree. We're gonna let these pine trees dry a minute and we're gonna Put on some white snowy highlights and we'll sign our painting and we'll be done. Woohoo! Bob Ross will be so proud of us. Oh, again. Now, this one did stop halfway down. Um, you know, if you want it to stop, not halfway down, but did leave a little bit of stump. If you want to have, if you like that look and you want that, you can. I'm kind of a stickler for what's more realistic. And I noticed that when I go in the mountains, there's not a big space here. That's kind of when you have a Christmas tree or a park, uh, a tree in a park where they mow underneath. That's your call. If you like that look, do that. Mine might just have a little stump. All right, so I got my branches on there. This tree's, he's an old guy. Maybe he's seen better days. All right, so we're gonna let that dry a minute, okay? We're gonna let our tree uh, foliage dry. And while we're letting that dry, Go ahead and clean your, that brush you just used. 
and pick up a little bit of white and a little bit of that brown on the same brush. See that? Just a little tiny bit. And we're going to use that to just scribble a shadow underneath, just like we did over there. Not too brown, but we're just scribbling on a little shadow underneath. Little shadow. Every everything has a shadow. Everything has a shadow. This one needs a little shadow. So if, it, if you got a tree there, it needs a little shadow. A little shadow underneath. Not too much. If it's a tiny tree, just a tiny shadow. Okay. All right, and then we're going to take our teeny tiny baby brush and I'm going to pull it through some red paint. Whoa, red, what are we doing with red? And then I'm gonna sign my name down here in the bottom. Actually, I'm just gonna put my two little initials. I do it in red just so it's easy to find um, and it's small. But you can do it in whatever color you want. You can do it in whatever size you want. Now remember, there's still one more step and it's the easiest, fastest step we're just gonna highlight these, but we've gotta let this dry another minute. <laughs> All right, I'm just add a little bit more foliage over my green here, because I noticed that I can see my trunk too much. So a little fullness in here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the highlights, but don't do it if your foliage is still wet, only do it at first on the dry ones, okay? Okay. It's super easy, super easy. Clean your med that me that flat brush again. Mine's a medium flat. I don't know if yours is larger, but whatever your flat brush was that you were using, clean it really well, super, super, super well, because we're gonna go into white. Oops, I think I need some more white. One second, let me ask my trusty assistant. He said, could you bring me a little white paint? Thanks. All right, so all you have to do for the, the snow is you basically are gonna do the same thing that you did for the green, but you're gonna do about a third less. No, no, you're only gonna use about a third. It's gonna sit right on top of the branches. And I'm just going back and forth in the same way, but I'm not putting on as much paint because I still wanna see that green underneath it. And I'm just kind of going on top of the main the, the big branches, and I'm extending it out a little bit. But I'm not using as much paint and a lot less pressure. And I'm just gonna do that on top of all of my pine tree foliage, but not the wet ones, wait till it's dry. But do you see how that looks like snow just sitting on top? A Little more fullness over the trunk. Just like the snow just kind of sat on the individual bristles and just stayed there. So I'm gonna look for dry ones and I'm gonna do it over the dry ones first. But don't cover all your green. We wanna see that green in some spots too. This, this is, the snow only sits on the top of the branches and extends out at the very tips. It doesn't completely cover the branches so we wanna be careful, don't overdo it, don't overdo it. If you totally cover it, it'll just look like you had a white, you know, it'll just look weird, like a white tree grew there. You need the green. Bob Ross always used to say, you have to have dark to see the light. Mm. A good motto for 2020. <laughs> awesome. Such. We're big fans of Bob Ross here because I'm a certified Bob Ross instructor and um, we do teach when it's not COVID pandemic time, we do teach certified Bob Ross classes. They're six hour long oil painting classes. Um, they cost more money, but you get a lot of instruction in them and you go home with a beautiful oil painting. Uh, so um, we're one of the I think we're probably the only paint and sip in Colorado I know that has a Bob Ross teacher on staff. Um, and, you know, it is a certification process. It means I went down to Florida and got my certificate down there and hung out at his studio and all that good stuff. So those are a lot of fun. We also uh, 
when it's not pandemic time, we teach acrylic painting classes here every single day of the year, except for Thanksgiving. We also teach watercolor about once a week, no, uh, once a month. Um, again, when it's not pandemic time, we teach, uh, uh, what else? Paint Your Pet. We do a lot of fundraisers here, a lot of fundraisers. We really love to help nonprofits. Uh, we're local and family owned and we it's really important to us to give back to the community. So uh, we, we give a lot of money away to nonprofits in the community through our fundraisers. Yay. All right. So I'm gonna have to be careful on this one because once again, I put it behind the main tree. <laughs> Stay away from the main branch on that tree to get some snow on that back there. Probably would have made sense to put the snow on first and then go back in and whatever. You need to make it flat then. Let's be careful. All right. If it starts to get, your white starts to look uh, like light green, it means you didn't wait till the tree was dry. Can I use red earlier? I was just dipping right out of white. I don't much left. All right, so then I'm waiting for this one to be a little more dry. I'm just gonna be real careful. Looking for dry spots. If you pick up any wet, just clean your brush. And keep keep the same angle, right? If it's leaning, the angle of the branches is going to lean too. I hope you guys had fun painting with me tonight. I had a wonderful time listening to all of you because you guys seem like an awesome company. <laughs> Well, thank you, Nina. You it's been a blast being with you, and thanks for being our instructor tonight. Oh, you are so welcome. I love doing what I do. I That's love my job. It's easy, and people are usually really happy here. So if you need to get away from the meanies, come on in and paint with me after the pandemic's over, okay? Because there's only happy people in here. <laughs> All right. So anyway, that's the end of my painting. I hope you had a good time. I had a great time. You guys are wonderful.